Question 5. Let's try to understand how to sketch a piecewise function. I hope you've already got some concepts with first four examples. Now here we are taking exponential function and a quadratic function, okay, the combination of two. And the pieces are joined together at x. Whether they are together or not, we will figure out, okay. Function before us, f of x, is equal to minus 2x squared minus 3 if x is less than 0. And it is 2 to the power of x minus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 0. So that point 0 is included with the second function, okay. So when we are trying to do this, now let me do my rough work here around the graph itself rather than showing you on the side since you understand how things should look like right so here we can say that this side of the function is minus 2x square minus 3 right this is when x is less than 0 and that side is 2 to the power of x minus 2 correct now let's also see how the function should look like. Here it is a parabola. Minus means downwards, right? So this is kind of like this function, right? This is an exponential function which moves two units down and so we'll say, well, this is xx. Let's say it's kind of like this, right? So that is your exponential function and these are splitting at x equals to zero, okay? Let's see how to do it. So best way as we figure out is to find table of values. Table of values give you very accurate results. So we will continue with that. We have table of values here. So that part is for x greater than or equal to 0 and this is for x less than 0, right? So this starts with filled in thing and this starts with a whole. Remember that when we are going left, okay? Now let me do positive side first. So 0 is included here. So we'll say, well, this is filled in whole. And at 0, the value should be, let me write this function itself here, 2 to the power of x minus 2. So when I plug in 0 here, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Many times I've seen students making this mistake. They write 2 to the power of 0 as 0 or something, but not 1. But 2 to the power of 0, for that matter, anything to the power of 0 is 1 except 0, okay? <laughs> we don't consider that part, okay? Well, that's a big discussion, 0 to the power of x. We'll consider it in another video, okay? Well, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, and so 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So we get our first point, and that is included, right? Then the second point is we just go on, right? Say 1 and 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, and then 2, 2 to the power is 2, 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, positive. And we can say 3, 3 times 3, I mean 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and 8 minus 2 is 6. This is also a mistake. When I write 2 to the power of 3, I have seen many students writing it as 2 times 3 is 6. That's terrible. 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, and 8 minus 2 is 6, okay? Now, let's plot these points. So at 0, we have minus 1. So at 0, we have minus 1, and that point is included. So let's fill it up, okay? At 1, it is 0. So at 1, we have 0. And at 2, it is 2. So at 2, it is 2. At 3, it is 6. So at 3 is 2, 4, and 6. Likewise, it is greater than 0. That means it will just move on and on, right? Okay. So let's draw this graph. It's an exponential function like this. Is it okay? That is the right side of x greater than equal to 0. Perfect. Now let's look into the left side, which is minus 2x square minus 3, right? Left side means we have to go from 0 to negative, right? So let's go to 0, and we are starting with the whole here, right? So say 0. When I plug in 0 here, I get minus 3. 
and now next point should be minus 1, right? We are going left. Minus 1 squared is 1, then we get times minus 2. Minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. Let's do minus 2 and minus 2 squared is 4 plus. 4 times 2 8, minus 8 and minus 11. We got enough points here. We know the nature of this graph, right? Nature of this graph is kind of like this. This was an exponential function, right? But steeply going up. Well, now let's plot these points and see how will this look like. So at 0, we are at minus 3. So 1, 2 and 3. So this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. But we have to start with the whole. Do you understand? That is kind of critical. And it is a good starting point to even write down what these points are. So we have minus 1 here and minus 3 here. Okay? Correct. So we know our scale. This is like 1, 1. Is it okay? Minus 1 here. Perfect. Now at minus 1 we have minus 5. At minus 1 we are already here at 3, 4 and 5. At minus 2 it is 11. So we are 5 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's say somewhere here. So our parabola starts from 3, not including, and move like this. So that is how our graph will look like for this function. Well, piecewise functions normally, if you see the question, they will say sketch a piecewise function and ask some characteristics. Right? For example, here you can think about intervals of increasing for example if can you tell me which is the inter or domain range let's start with domain range so what is the domain so write down these things range while you're learning how to sketch a piecewise function uh, also look into characteristics of the function which should include domain range asymptotes symmetry right uh, increasing intervals, decreasing intervals, end behaviors, and all those things, correct? So, can you tell me what is the domain here? Domain, you can see, is all real numbers, and range is everything but missing something in between, which is, it is missing, it, it, it is greater than or equal to minus 1 and less than minus 3, right? That is what the range is. Can you tell me the interval of increasing and decreasing? So, it is increasing from where to where and decreasing from where to where. So, those are the things which you can fill up and, uh, you know, that will help you to understand your graphs. And actually, you can do this exercise for all the graphs which we have in this section, okay? Uh, the other characters which I'm not putting down here are, of course, end behavior and, uh, you know, things like that, correct? So do them so that it gives you a good practice. Thank you.